This slide, we want to try and see how to deal with uh, continuous charge distribution and find the electric field due to a continuous charge distribution at a certain point in space. So in this case, we have a line of charge. The line has a length L and it's positive charge and lambda is constant. So the charge per unit length is the same everywhere, it's uniform. And we want to find the electric field <laughs> at point P, the origin. And point P is located a distance A away from the edge of the rod. So try to think about the problem on your own for a few minutes and figure out how you would solve it. Remember that this thickness, the, the thickness of this rod is zero. I just put it with some thickness so you can see it. So it's basically just a line on the x-axis. Try and figure out uh, for a few minutes how to solve it and then continue. So let's try to illustrate the problem uh, where you're not going to be solving problems with continuous charge distributions like this, but it's a very good way to illustrate and to develop a qualitative understanding of what's going on. So let's just cut up the rod into 11 parts. We don't know how to deal with a long rod, but maybe we can deal with small, uh, the, when the rod, when it's cut up into small parts. Now, why the number 11? Of course, you should ask this question. Of course, there's no reason for it to be 11. In principle, the only thing we know how to do is to calculate the electric field due to a point charge. So ultimately, we need to make the number of elements go to infinity. But just to illustrate the idea, I just want to cut it up into 11 parts to show you the qualitative argument for the problem. So let's look at what the electric field would be due to the first element of charge uh, at point P. It's going to be some vector, large vector to the left, and approximately the electric field due to the first element will be Ke delta Q1 over X1 squared in the minus I hat direction. X1 is the distance from the element to the point where you want to find the electric field. And it's in the minus I hat direction because we said that the charge is positive. Okay, now remember that this formula, you cannot use this formula really uh, ac uh, exactly in this case because the, this size is not zero. The, this is not a point charge. When you cut up a line into 11 parts, the, each part is not a point charge. So this is an approximation. It's just we're doing this just to illustrate the idea, the qualitative idea. The next element of charge, the electric field will be this value. Now, X2 is bigger than X1 because it's located farther away from point P. So the value of the electric field or the vector will be a bit smaller because X2 is in the denominator. When X2 is bigger, then the value of the electric field will become a bit smaller. And look, as we go along, how this electric field vector becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Here it became a bit 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 smaller. And so on. So on. So the contribution to the electric field at point P is getting much weaker when the charges are far, apart, far away from the point. Okay, so if you want to write down the total electric field at point P as a summation, you can sum 1 to 11 Ke delta Qi over Xi squared in the minus I hat direction. Now remember, this is still an approximation. In principle, you shouldn't do this because there's no justification for using the equation of a point charge for this problem when you cut it up into 11 parts. This is just to illustrate the idea. How would you make this exact? You can make this exact, which in which case you can use an equal sign, by making the number of elements go to infinity, which is the same thing as making the size of each element approach zero. In that case, you are justified in using the equation for a point charge kq over x squared, and then this will give you an exact value of the electric field at point P. You can change the element of charge delta qi for each uh, element of length by writing it as lambda times delta x, charge per unit length times the length. So this is what the electric field would be as a limit of sums. And instead of writing uh, the limit when n goes to infinity, the number of elements goes to infinity, you can, the same way of saying it is you can say that the limit when delta x goes to zero. 
because when the number of elements goes to infinity, then the size of each element approaches zero. So it's the same thing. So we want to do this so that we can write the, all the variables in the, in, in the problem in the same variable. Instead of having delta Q on the numerator and X here, we want to write everything in terms of X. So now we have lambda delta X and we have X in the denominator and we have the limit when delta X goes to zero. This is, if you know from your math course, this limit of sums is nothing but a definite integral. And in all this procedure, I put the minus i there everywhere. It doesn't do anything in the problem. It's just there because of the direction of the electric field. But the limit of sums, this part here, is basically just a definite integral. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And why do we put the limits from a to a plus l? Because the first element of charge is located at the distance a from point p. And the last element of charge is located at the distance a plus l from point p. So this is why the limits are the way they are. And here you have the lambda, there's the lambda, there's the ke, there's the ke, the delta x becomes dx, xi squared becomes x squared, and the minus i is as it is minus i. Again, you're not going to be solving problems uh, in reality this way. This is just meant to illustrate the idea. In the next slide, you're going to see exactly how to solve the problem in a very simple and quick way.